We welcome our witnesses. Uh, we're here to have testimony from a range of in industries to tell us about the importance of the United States-Mexico-Canada agreement. And we soon are referring that to always as USMCA. We look forward to hearing uh, from our witnesses about the significance of the agreement to American businesses, both small and large, the workers, the farmers that we all represent. Thank you for being here. Uh, Mexico and Canada are our country's most important trading partners. According to the International Trade Commission for the year 2017, more than one-third of America's merchandise exports went to Mexico and Canada. In that year, Mexico and Canada imported more than half a trillion dollars of American goods, plus more than $91 billion of American services. For Iowa, our six and six-tenths billion dollars of exports to Mexico and Canada supported 130,000 jobs. The foundation of our strong trading relationship with Mexico and Canada has been thus far NAFTA. The United States, Mexico, and Canada negotiated that agreement between 1990 and 93. At the time, it was uh, a, a new standard of trade agreements. It helped Mexico reform into a market economy. It enabled American businesses, workers, farmers, and ranchers to sell our goods and services in Mexico and Canada without tariffs and without many non-tariff barriers that for decades had burdened our ability to compete in those two countries. Of course, the U.S. economy and the global trade have changed dramatically since uh, 1993, and 25 years of experience with NAFTA have provided valuable lessons. The time for modernizing NAFTA has come, and that's what USMC is all about. It sets a new standard for our trade agreements. For example, once enacted, the agreement will make it, will be the first U.S. free trade agreement with robust chapters dedicated to dig digital trade, anti-corruption, good regulatory practices, and small and medium-sized enterprises. USMCA will set a new benchmark in many other areas as well, such as free transfer of data across borders, strong rules on state-owned enterprises, North American content requirements for uh, preferential treatment, food safety and biotechnology standards, customs and trade facilitation, intellectual property rights protection, and enforcement labor and environment. USMCA labor chapter squarely addresses workers' rights in Mexico, and it already has resulted in the overhaul of Mex Mexico's labor laws. The labor and environmental standards in the agreement are the most rigorous in any U.S. trade deal, and unlike with NAFTA, they're in the core of the agreement and are fully enforceable. USMCA also squarely addresses long-standing U.S. concerns in the Canadian market, such as Canadian policies on wheat grading, retail sale of wine, dairy supply management, and the distribution of U.S. television programming. These are substantial improvements from NAFTA. They represent benefits and new opportunities for Iowans and for Americans across the board. According to the International Trade Commission, the agreement will increase real GDP by $68 billion and 176,000 new American jobs. Now that's not to say that every USMCA provision is perfect. Trade agreements always need to balance the preferences of different industries, regions, elected leaders, and stakeholders. Some of my Democratic colleagues in the House of Representatives have centered their attention on USMCA outcomes that they view imperfect. 
Surely nobody could consider NAFTA to be better than USMCA, and nobody, let me emphasize, nobody should dismiss the importance of a half trillion dollar market for U.S. agricultural products. I came away from a meeting that I had with Speaker Pelosi that was very positive as I uh, heard her words and, and expressed her attitude towards USMCA. People want to push and push, but I think we must be patient as she works through this, and I have confidence she wants to get to yes. Uh, I have supported the, uh, besides, I have also supported the ongoing work of uh, the, the speaker's members with Ambassador Lighthizer to clarify outstanding concerns and identify bipartisan solutions. I have an open mind to workable ideas and stand ready to consider possible improvements in the agreement. For example, I support strong enforcement of all of the chapters through a system that works reliably and has credibility with our trading partners. I'm also pleased that important USMCA provisions on prescription drugs will not require any changes to U.S. law, and I would be open to proposals that would confirm that point. At the same time, every day that passes is another day that benefits uh, USMCA go unrealized. Trying to reopen the whole agreement could risk unraveling the deal altogether, which would benefit nobody. I therefore urge the House of Representatives and Ambassador Lighthizer to focus on their specific concerns and to propose solutions in short order so that we can pass USMCA. Doing so will provide much needed certainty to American workers, businesses, farmers, ranchers, families, and will enhance the credibility of our ambitious global trading. Senator White. Thank you very much.